Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we'll be talking about church membership decline. And I'm going to read through two articles by the Gospel Coalition on the decline in church membership. And I'm going to say what they're not going to say. So the first article, which is the more recent article, is by Thomas Kidd. And I, I've never really heard of him. He's a supposed historian. But his anal his analysis here is really sub subpar, to be honest. Um, it's basically, you know, fewer Americans are members of a church because, um, you know, they're not actually saved. So, you know, this polling on a religious issue has really no bearing on... Uh, how many Christians there are or aren't. Now, this would be good analysis, or actually this would just be average analysis, if the question were about whether people who identified as Christian was in decline. However, that's not what the question is. That's not what the poll is talking about. The poll is talking about people who identify as Christian, their rates of church membership are in decline. That's what the poll is quite is talking about so he you know he ends basically you know just to read his own words about what he was saying if nominal utilitarian civil right religious christianity is mostly what is fading away with the cratering of american church membership then i say good riddance and again that's average analysis if we were talking about the Americans who are identifying as Christian being in decline, which is not what we're talking about right here. And then we're going to you know, look at uh, Joe Carter. Now, Joe Carter is the worst, and I mean the absolute worst, pro-life activist I have ever seen. Uh, he's part of the uh, ERLC and the Gospel Coalition, so he has a double whammy on being a big Eva stooge. However, however, he does understand what this poll is talking about. Most of the rest of the drop can be attributed in or can be attributed to a decline in formal church membership among Americans who do have religious preference. The decline in church membership, as Gallup notes, appears largely tied to population change. Those in older generations were likely to be church members are being replaced in the United States adult population by younger people less likely to join institutions. So, you know, Joe Carter actually understands what the poll is talking about. And However, I don't think he's going far enough in his analysis of the situation. So, here's him trying to break down like the problem, the root of the problem, and what it means. As many American pastors can tell you, younger people are clear on, on why they need to be a member of a church. Membership implies belonging to an exclusive group, not necessarily welcoming others. Why then would a Christian need to be a member of a church? Well, to answer that question, we need to first understand... Oh my gosh, he's going to go through all this basic stuff. Okay, right here. Church membership is a formal relationship between a church and a Christian characterized by the church's affirmation and oversight of a Christian's discipleship and submission to living in this discipleship and care of the church. In other words, church membership is all about a church taking specific responsibility for you and you for the church. Now, that's actually a pretty good definition of church membership. I think that's a good explanation for why church mem membership is useful. And now that he's explained that, he's almost done his article here, um... So he's basically explaining why church membership is necessary, and that's all well and good, but he's not, I don't think he's really explaining why it's actually in decline. I think he's mostly, Joe Carter is mostly um, trying to push this as a generational issue that young people are not being taught the value of church membership and why it is necessary. So 
But I posit another problem. I posit that the size of the church dissuades church membership. And what do I mean by that? I think the rise of megachurches, not just in large metropolitan areas like Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, or Willow Creek Church somewhere outside the Chicago area, but um, the rise in these megachurches springing all over the country in the sub in the, not just uh, urban populations and their surrounding areas, but also in suburban populations, the, and even some rural areas are having megachurches pop up. I would credit that with the decline in church membership among millennials and Gen Z. At least partially. At least partially, I think that the rise in megachurches negatively affects church membership. So... If we want to dig a little deeper, and I'm sure anyone, you know, if you're in a very small church, the likelihood of you being a member is much higher than you being in a very large church. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. I think there's a lot of uh, data that can back that up. Uh, I, I remember looking, when, when I talked about uh, FBC Naples, which was a mega church in Naples, Florida, you know, the amount of members that voted to not let the woke pastor be, you know, the pastor of a church was not n nearly the size of the membership of that total church. So I'm talking about stuff like that. And I know, and another thing I want to point out is not only does the size of a church sometimes dissuade membership in a church, it can also... Um, Growing up in the church, so young people who grow up in the church may already feel like they are members of a church. So if you grow up in the church, you go through their, you know, their children's and then your their youth ministry, and if they have a young adult ministry, you're in that as well. You may not they those people may not feel so inclined to be become formal members of a church because they already feel like they are formal members of a church. So I see that as another explanation for the decline specifically among young individuals. Because if you go to a church that is a thousand members in one, one location on a given Sunday, the you can go in and you can go out without really being noticed. So this uh, anonymity allows you to not really become very engaged in the church and in the function of the church. And now if we did the reverse, if you're going to a church with 20 people, you're not as anonymous as you would be in a church of a thousand. So therefore, you're actually more likely to be engaged in the leadership and the well-being of the church. So that's kind of the thing I'm talking about now. Joe Carter here is, uh, it says he's an associate pastor at McLean Bible Church, Arlington, Virginia. So I, I believe that's David Platt's mega church in McLean, Virginia, Nova, as it's called. And, you know, if he were to actually talk about, you know, how church membership can be a uh, deterrence to, or the size, if Joe Carter were to actually talk about the size of a church being a deterrence to people seeking membership in a church, then, you know, he'd be calling out his own church. I think church growth is largely an industry. Like, there's a church growth industry. And, you know, there's whole organizations, corporations even, that are de designed to help churches become mega churches. You know, they have consulting firms. Acts 29 is somewhat like this. Uh, there's a few other. And then you... And, you know... When you're more fo when a church is more focused on putting butts in seats, then they're oftentimes less focused on having their regenerate members become formal members of that organization. 
So I think that's um, an issue that Big Eva doesn't want to talk about because, you know, being a mega church pastor is a pathway to Big Eva. And I don't think Big Eva wants to talk about that because that would be too much self-awareness and self-condemnation. So I don't think they're going to talk about that, but I will talk about that. So that's all I got to say about that. Like I said, I think the decline in church membership, if we put coronavirus lockdowns aside, really has two factors going for it. One is that young people who are growing up in the church do not already feel like they are formal members of a church, despite not having like a certification of any sort. So they're not becoming members of that church. Or two, I think it's also possible that the size of a church is a deterrence to becoming a formal member of that church because you can just slip in and out or you just get funneled to a small group, which will do the function of the local church, in my opinion. I think that a lot of mega churches use small groups to function as the actual church, to carry out the church functions that Joe Carter was talking about why churches are needed or why church membership is necessary. So Joe, Joe Carter's talking about why church membership is necessary, but in reality, churches that are so large really pawn off the duty of what he's talking about, why church membership is necessary so that um, a church can take ownership in a person's discipleship. Churches, mega churches largely pawn that off on the small groups or life groups, whatever they want to call those groups. And so the church attendee does not feel the need to become a formal member. So I think two factors going on. Comment below what you think about what I think. Do you agree with my assessment or not? Let me know. Uh, my name's Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Also subscribe to evangelicaldarkweb.org. Linked in the description below. Have a blessed day and I will catch you on the next one.